The United States Commission on International Religious Freedom says Christians in China are facing an alarming escalation of persecution. This week, Public Security Bureau police invaded and shut down Zion Church in Beijing. Moments before that raid, this sign appeared just outside the church sanctuary. Now it looks like this. PSB agents removed the sign. No church here. Amen. Members of Zion Church were not deterred. Although authorities closed their building, they continued to pray and worship outside in the street. Also this summer, other Christians throughout China have seen their churches closed or demolished. Government officials have arrested church leaders. They've confiscated and burned Bibles, and they're still removing crosses from atop church buildings. What in the world is going on in China, and why now? Well, here to provide some insights is Voice of the Martyrs radio host and spokesman, Todd Nettleton. So, Todd, is this something new or more of the same? Well, we are seeing more persecution or a higher level of persecution. There's a couple of developments that have happened this year that I think contribute to that. One of those is in February, new regulations on religious affairs took effect all across China. And so we're seeing those regulations now being put into effect and enforced. We're seeing how that's being translated from the national government down to the provincial level and then to the local level and how that's affecting churches. Another thing that uh, affects this is the fact that in March, Chinese President Xi Jinping was uh, essentially given a lifetime contract. He was uh, renewed his presidency and was told that term limits are no longer apply to you. So he can essentially serve as president for as long as he wants. And one of his emphasis, even going back to his days as a provincial leader, was on controlling religious expression and controlling the church. And so we're seeing that what he put into effect as a provincial leader, now that he's the president of the entire country, that same emphasis is spreading from the national government level down to every part of China. Why is it happening now? Well, our Christian brothers and sisters in China are telling us that this is the worst persecution they've seen, even going back to the Cultural Revolution. And what's happening is the, the government at the national level is trying to exert more and more control over religious expression. Uh, what we've seen in, in the last number of months is uh, the government will come into a church and say, hey, why don't you take down that picture of Jesus in your sanctuary? and put up these patriotic posters instead. Uh, why don't you not sing hymns to start out your service? Why don't you sing some patriotic songs about the, the wonderfulness of the Communist Party? One pastor in Beijing not long ago was told by the government, they said, Pastor, we don't mind if you continue holding your services. Uh, we just want to put this camera on your platform looking out at the audience, uh, and it's attached to facial recognition software so that we can tell who comes to church on Sunday and, and who's there and what they're doing and how involved they are. The pastor obviously said, no, we're not going to allow you to do that. And uh, just last weekend, that church was shut down. Officials came to the service. They said, nope, you are closed. You cannot meet anymore. So uh, basically, the national government is making more and more effort to control every facet of religious expression in China. And uh, this is not only affecting Christians. There are tens of thousands of Muslims in Western China that have been detained, and they're also seeking to control religious expression by Muslims as well. What impact is this likely to have on the church and Christianity in China? The larger gatherings may stop for a while, uh, may be put on hold, and we will see more and more smaller gatherings. One of the challenges for the church in that situation is, okay, if we're not meeting in one group of 400, but we're meeting in lots of groups of, of 12 to 20, we need a lot of group leaders. We need leadership that is trained and ready to lead those groups. And so leadership development becomes a high priority in that situation. What can our viewers do about it? You know, the first thing that we can do is pray for the church in China, pray for our brothers and sisters there as they go through this time of trial. And not long ago on our Voice of the Martyrs radio podcast, we had a guest, one of our workers, who's very involved with the church in China. And I asked him how we could pray, and he gave what I think is a very insightful prayer request. He said, 
Pray especially for the young people who are part of the church in China because they've never faced this before. They've never been through this. Their, their parents and their grandparents have gone through persecution. They've seen how God sustains and God empowers and protects during times of trial and times of suffering. But these young people within the church, they haven't been through it. They haven't seen that. And so naturally, like many of us, they're intimidated. They're a little frightened by how are we going to deal with this level of persecution that we're facing. And so secondly, we can have a voice and we can have a voice to our own government officials. You know, a lot of the, the conversation between the U.S. government and the Chinese government right now is about trade. But we need to make sure that our government officials here know that that we vote and that we care about religious freedom, that they should use their influence and we expect them to use their influence. Okay, Todd Nettleton of The Voice of the Martyrs, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Gary.